Ryanair or it's like Spain has um, publicly come out and chastised Ryanair for their high baggage fee prices. I'm sure most of you guys are aware that I think, um, when was it? Must have been, was it maybe a year ago, maybe a few months ago, Ryanair enacted a change in their proceed yeah and that's a change in the, in the way they uh in the way they price their baggage allowances i think in the beginning you were one kind of carry-on luggage was allowed for free when you were you know on the low-cost airline any luggage above that or any luggage no i think you were allowed to take it for free but what they did is that they made sure if you wanted to take it on the actual you know overheads you had to pay an extra fee so you have to then um, reserve a seat or whatever it may be right now they've enacted a new change that basically um, means that any baggage that you bring onto the tr to the plane outside of a tote bag or you know a little rucksack or something even even a rucksack I think you have to claim you have to put you have to kind of check in or you know pay for you have to pay for all your luggage essentially going on a Ryanair flight which is a super annoying most of the reason why you'd go on a low cost airline is to you know pay low low, low fees. You avoid all the on air entertainment. You don't take part in any of the confectionery. You don't eat any of the food. You don't use their Wi Fi so that you can you know, um, save some money on the flights and then kind of use that money in order to kind of you know add to your spending money for the week or for the weekend that you're away. So the whole baggage allowance thing was super annoying. And the fact that by and large, the service that you get from these low cost airlines is barely, you know, it barely constitutes, you know, decent service. It's just about, it's just about possible. You get in the queue, there's no real communication. You have to wait forever to get on the plane. The plane's only on the tarmac for maybe 40 to 30 minutes, if that. Um, there's in and out like a shotty. The seats are very uncomfortable. Um, most of the planes probably could do with a lick of paint or a, or a refurbishment or maybe an upgrade in general. The staff look like they don't want to be there. It's just a complete you know, horror show from top to bottom. But, you know, they do a really good job in terms of getting, a, you know, in terms of, getting people to and from their locations you rarely hear of accidents um you rarely hear of delays they if you do, if you do have a delay they you know even though people like to make a lot of noise on social media for the most part if i've ever had a delay on ryanair which is you know i probably count on one hand at times it's happened they've always kind of so, they've always sorted it out before the customers have even noticed they've always kind of gone out of their way to kind of make sure things have, have worked out better for us now i'm not sure if that's a, if that if that can be said for um easy jet or if that's just a ryanair thing but for the for most of the time that i've been abroad traveling around europe most of my flights have been on time if they have been delayed they've kind of sorted out before i've even noticed so this article's from ryan it's from bbc um in spain basically criticizing ryanair's new baggage policy and the title is ryanair baggage fee policy ruled as excessive by spain um the spanish court has called budget airline ryanair policy of charging a fee for hand luggage excessive um after a passenger was fined for taking a carry-on bag without special ticket which obviously is the fault of the actual um person that was flying i think sometimes when you watch some of those programs especially on youtube there's little clips of uh, people freaking out at low-cost airline airports or just at airports in general when they're flying on low-cost airline Sometimes when you dig deep into the issue at hand, it's usually things that way out of the control of the person at the desk or the person at check-in. Sometimes it is the error of the actual passengers themselves arriving too late, not not reading the sign, not reading the signs, not listening to instructions. Or sometimes, in some cases, I remember seeing one episode of this dude that arrived late and just decided to run through the terminal to try and get to the plane regardless. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He tried to run past the person that was going to scan you to go in with your boarding pass and try to board the train, and of course got apprehended by airport security. So sometimes, you know, you can people can kind of exaggerate the issue. But it continues. The passenger was forced to pay. 20 euros fee or fine to bring the 10k luggage on board which is really peanuts i think sometimes they they do say if you don't print isn't it if you don't print your boarding pass you have to pay 50 euros it's quite cool that's not bad fee actually to just pay 17 pounds when you get there um all right ryanair allowed only small bags as hand luggage if they are if they can be stowed beneath the seat in front of you the airline said it could would not change its baggage policy of course because it makes the money i think that's the that's the place where i think people have to be understanding of a uh, airline like Ryanair they charge these low fees in terms of the flights you can especially if you be able to buy a flight during the sale season you can get some crazy good deals they tend to get people to and from their location pretty you know with, with, without any kind of hiccup or hitch or anything so they have to make money on other things right whether it's in-air entertainment like I said before on uh, in-air entertainment the, the meals that they sell the magazines sometimes I think they even sell fragrances and stuff so I'm not surprised that they would see 
a real um, way to make money, especially if you just stand in a queue. If they went to any airport, especially Stanton, and just observed the people going in the Ryanair um, uh, flights, you would see people do kind of take the piss a little bit with the baggage they kind of bring on and the bags they kind of deem to be hand luggage. So I'm not surprised. Even myself, I've got a really big backpack that I could essentially just use as a carry-on luggage. But when I do go on holiday on, in Europe, I tend to put some more stuff in my backpack and then have a hand luggage as well. So I'm effectively kind of getting two for one. Um, now, obviously, I have to pay for two bags, but I could effectively, if I wanted to, be a really good passenger and speed up the process. I could just take all my stuff in one bag. I don't need to take it in two bags. I think people don't really know how to pack that well. I can consider myself in that um, in that bracket too. I'm not really good at packing. I don't prioritize stuff. I tend to get paralyzed by the options I have available and then tend to end up taking half my wardrobe to the holiday I'm going and end up ha hardly wearing any of the stuff because you know by the time you arrive there you've got one outfit on that you, you essentially probably don't want to be bothered to change out of then so that effectively rules one day is an outfit out of your wardrobe the other outfits you might have thought worked when she was in the UK once you're at home in your home country when you fly to the, your destination it might completely change but like, actually no this won't work here Loads of things that happen, and I can sometimes get a bit paralyzed even by shoes, bringing too many shoes on the flight. And imagine how annoying that must be trying to pack that stuff, right? Um, the passenger was traveling from Madrid to Brussels um, when she was charged to bring her extra luggage. It's interesting that Spain would get involved and publicly say this about one passenger. Maybe it's an issue that a lot of Spanish people are suffering from, or maybe this person that's flying on this airplane was a very influential or high ranking person because I don't see why they'd care about this really. But anyway, fair enough. The airline has a policy of charging customers an additional fee for carrying anything more than one personal item on board. Larger bags can also require a luggage fee. In its ruling, the commercial court ruled that the woman should be refunded with interest. The baggage could easily have filled in the cabin. The judge said, okay, that's that's fair enough. That does sometimes happen. Sometimes get, you know, um, stewardess or people that work for the airline being a little bit, you know, a little bit too picky, a little bit too anal. And sometimes I think I've had it on one occasion where I, it's been quite obvious that they were doing like random luggage checks on people and they were kind of like picking people out randomly from the queue, picking up their hand luggage and placing it in a little cage to see if it fits. And then of course, if it didn't fit, they usually give you a warning. They wouldn't necessarily tell you to pay the fine, but it was just like a kind of to put the, the fright of God in you so that next time you flew, you knew to kind of not make that mistake again, which again, like I said, I think it's a, it's a two-way relationship. I think passengers or people in general we require some of these rules and especially european i don't know what we were a bit cheeky when we travel i think these if they didn't have any rule and said you could take two luggages on for free hand luggage people just stretch that term of hand luggage to its nth degree right so it gets a bit crazy especially i have i've noticed now with the with the introduction of the charge for uh hand luggage or you know uh the luggage that goes away in the overhead compartments i have noticed um, that most of the trips I've gone on, there's a lot more room now in the overhead luggage spaces, which makes sense now because a lot of people don't want to pay the extra 20 euros to take hand luggage on them. They'd rather just stow whatever bag they have, you know, underneath the plane or whatever, right? In the stow area, whatever it may be called, right? Um, so th that's a big thing I've noticed too, which is good because it means going forward, people are going to be a little bit more considerate about what they bring on the airplane. And that might effectively kind of reduce the wait times that we have in the queue and all that sort of stuff, which probably won't happen because I think they, they quite like having people standing around just waiting for the sake of it. Um, so it continues. However, compensation was ruled out as a judge did not deem the case to have uh, caused enough stress for the disgruntled passenger. The airline said it had not changed its policy. Uh, the ruling will not affect Ryanair's baggage policy either in the past or in the future as it's an isolated case that misinterpreted our commercial freedom to determine the size of our baggage. The ruling cannot be appealed. So yeah, I completely understand <coughs> where they're coming from. I think the person that is complaining about this <coughs> probably just had a bad experience with, a, with a, a staff member that was just having a bad day. It can happen. But I think overall, to expect the Ryan, to expect these low budget airlines to change their baggage allowance policy when they're allowing you to fly from London to Barcelona for forty pounds is nuts. They have to make money somehow. But I am curious to see where innovation is able to come in and kind of sol um, provide a solution for this sort of stuff. I think we've seen or heard stories. No, actually, we've seen the images that Elon Musk um, presented. Actually, let me get that video up here. That looked absolutely amazing. You remember those Earth to Earth travel, the uh, BFR, that spaceship, that um, or the rocket that Elon. Musk Musk was designing that is still designing i think now it's changed its name i think it's now called starship now isn't it right but that bfr earth to earth travel was really a cool idea and i also remember um i seem to remember was it who was it i think it might have been with joe rogan Elon Musk did kind of a hint that he was working 
on a motorcycle and maybe an aeroplane. And if they're able to do that, that will completely change the way that we view, um, you know, cheap travel and also could change the way people just, you know, um, just in terms of the process, because that's the issue that I have with it at the moment, just the how you arrive, the way you get onto your plane, like, you know, in just it just takes a long time to get to places. But this video, I think, really kind of spoke to what I kind of see the future of air travel being. So let's see if I can get it up on here. Uh, BFR, Earth to Earth, right? This is a really cool video that I remember um, SpaceX putting out a while back when they were first presenting the big, the big effing rocket. And I'm going to have it here on screen shortly and quickly show you. And you can hear it in the podcast as you guys listening. Let me quickly get it up on here. There we go. This is the video kind of, you know, showcasing what could effectively happen with a BFR. So you've got here an image of uh, people boarding a boat just, you know, I think just off somewhere off New York. And there's a massive screen that's telling them how long the flights or the travel is going to take from their location. The boat then heads out, which I'm assuming is going to be a solar powered boat or sorry, an electric powered boat, heads up to uh, a dock in the middle of the ocean that has the BFR strapped on it, which I'm sure would kind of you know, just not what it wants to. And then people up on the elevator walking across the runway into the rocket. The rocket then leaves. Uh, in, just outside of orbit I'm assuming and then is able to get to the destinations in record time it looks so 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 cool I can't wait to see um, this happen again and again and again and imagine how this will change the way we travel or just imagine this is an aeroplane thing. that could be a good example of it as well maybe an aeroplane that takes off from the sea it takes off vertically and kind of levels out as it gets out, out there maybe similar to what Concorde did um, just flying a bit higher than what Concorde did and then the courses descending those boosters that we've seen before from SpaceX in Shanghai at 7.39 so that's a 39 minute journey from New York to Shanghai which of course you know the you know initially that kind of um, service would be reserved for you know people you know high flying executives who need to you know who are if you've read if you've read those books about the stock market you know how important it is for high flying executives especially in the stock market to have really fast internet connection some of the offices are located right next to the hubs where these internet, um, where the internet is basically sent out for the entire nation. So imagine the ability to uh, seal a deal, you know, um, effectively print out a contract and then fly over to Shanghai and get it signed within an hour, like all within an hour's time. That would be insane, wouldn't it? So I think this this option is a really cool um, way to see things. We've got Hong Kong to Singapore, twenty two minutes. Los Angeles, Toronto, twenty four. Bangkok to Dubai, twenty seven. Tokyo to Singapore 25, London to Dubai 20. So everything usually under, under like 40 minutes. It's a crazy, crazy um, thing to see. Hopefully we see it coming soon. Again, I'm not too sure what happens with Elon Musk projects. Not all they don't all go to plan. Sometimes regulatory um, restrictions come into effect. You know, stuff like the boring tunnel. You kind of not heard anything so far. But it'll be awesome if we see something like this pop up and maybe next sometime in the future. Let's see. We can only hope we can.